Are there differences between potty training boys and girls? Thank you so much for stopping by my channel for another potty training video where I'm discussing the differences in potty training a boy versus a girl. As some of you know from my previous potty training videos, it took me a long time to potty train my stubborn four-year-old daughter. After I finally successfully had accomplished this, I needed to post a video to YouTube and share what actually worked. That little four-year-old is now six years old and I have a little boy who just turned three. So it got me thinking, are there any differences between potty training a boy versus a girl? That's what I'll be sharing in this video, as well as some general signs of readiness for potty training, things not to do when potty training, and some general tips and tricks that will work for any child, whether they're a boy or a girl. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please keep on watching. My family of four just recently moved all the way across the country from New York to Utah. Even though my son was about two and a half years old when we were getting ready to move and, you know, packing all of our boxes and prepping everything, we decided to wait until after we had moved and we settled down here a little bit before starting potty training. The reason we did that is because big life changes can make potty training more difficult. That leads me to my first topic, signs of potty training readiness. Other things that can make potty training more difficult are moving from a crib to a toddler bed, a new sibling being born into the family, illness, really any big life change can make potty training more difficult. Here are some signs that your child will show when they are ready to potty train. Hiding during bowel movements, you'll notice them kind of running away, usually into a corner or a separate room, and crouching down and posturing for bowel movements, staying dry for at least two hours during the day, and being able to pull pants and underwear down and back up. So are there differences between potty training boys and girls? There actually are. Experts say it is easier to potty train girls than boys, and that's because girls are typically more advanced in language and physical development. Child psychologist Heather Wittenberg estimates that girls are potty trained three months earlier than boys. But don't be discouraged if you have a boy or if you're even having a hard time potty training a girl because I have tips and tricks to share with you and how to overcome some of the most common potty training mistakes. Here's what not to do. Probably the most important don't that I have on this list is not to have them sit for too long on the potty because of the risk of hemorrhoids. I know hemorrhoids are usually a thing that people associate with pushing too hard on the toilet, and that's definitely a contributing factor, and it's something that you don't typically think about with children, but children can definitely get hemorrhoids, and sitting for extended periods of time on the potty actually increases the risk. The cutout of the toilet seat causes the anus and rectum to sit lower than the rest of the body, and it puts extra pressure on those structures, and gravity is making all of the blood pool into those areas. Although hemorrhoids are less common in children, habits can last even after potty training is over. So you want to create a habit of only sitting as long as you need to. I would aim for five minutes on the toilet, 10 tops. My last don't is to not make a big deal out of accidents. Accidents are bound to happen, especially in the early stages of potty training. Yelling at or shaming your child because of accidents has actually shown to cause more accidents to happen instead of less. Please don't underestimate the power of your speech and the attitude that you choose to take about the potty training experience. All right, here are my tricks for you. Trick number one, talk it up. This goes not only for potty training, but pretty much anything else in your child's life. I know personally with my two kids, letting them know what's going to happen before it happens and giving them a little bit of a heads up makes everything run smoother than if I were just to throw surprises at them. For instance, my son just had his first haircut. He doesn't have much hair, even though he's already three. But anyway, I showed him pictures of the place before we went. I said, oh, look at all these cool vehicles that you can sit on. Which one are you gonna choose to sit on when you get your hair cut? Do you like the tractor? Do you like the car? It's a good idea to do this once or twice a day for about three days before the big event. 
When we got to the salon, there were no surprises. He felt super comfortable. The hairstylist said that he was the best behaved client she had all day, and he actually didn't want to leave. My next tip is to make the bathroom a fun space. Take inspiration from those kids' hair cutting salons where you know you can sit on a vehicle and, and the walls are painted cool colors and there's TV characters all over the place. It's just a very inviting space for a child. You want to make your bathroom that kind of fun and inviting space, especially if your child is one of those who are scared of the potty. I have a lot of people commenting on my previous potty training videos. Hey, what should I do? My child is terrified of the potty. I understand the struggle. It really, really helps to make the bathroom as inviting of a space as you can. This is as simple as adding some new decor. These are just some options that I'm sharing. Don't feel like you need to go out and buy $100 of new decor for your bathroom, but if you can just take maybe one or two of these ideas and implement it into your house, I'm sure it will make a huge difference. So in my bathroom, we did a beach theme. I have this shark that goes on the head of the sink. I bought it on Amazon. I believe it was less than $10. The water just flows out of his mouth. It's the type of thing that I know I would have loved as a kid. I still love sharks. <laughs> so I also got a shark bath mat. Let me tell you, the kids are obsessed with it. It's a giant hit and it makes them excited to go into the space, which is what we want. We need to get them in there. There are all sorts of cute things that you can find on the internet these days, like toilet paper holders. You could get towels with their favorite character on it or their favorite color. Okay, my next tip is to let them pick out their own training underwear. Training underwear comes with all sorts of characters on them in all sorts of colors. Copeland ended up picking baby Spider-Man training underwear. They are so cute and he absolutely loves them. Next, I really want to encourage using potty training books. My husband used a specific potty training book when he was potty training like 35 years ago and he still has the exact book. We used it for Adalia when she was potty training and it was her absolute favorite book for years on end. I have read this potty training book to her a thousand and one times. The potty training book that I'm referring to is Once Upon a Potty by Alona Frankel and she actually has a boy version and a girl version. The only difference about the two books is just naming the proper anatomy. My next tip, hear me out, is to use the big toilet instead of a little potty. Training a child on a little potty only to eventually switch them over to the full-size toilet once they finally got the hang of the little one seems like more work to me. Why not just start them on the bigger toilet to begin with? There are plenty of products that make full-size toilets accessible to toddlers and children. My personal favorite is the Mayfair by Bemis Little to Big Toilet Seat, which boasts an adult-size seat as well as a built-in potty training seat. In a single bathroom household like mine, Having a built-in potty training seat is the quickest and easiest way to switch from child mode to adult mode. In the past, I've used other external standalone potty training products like ladders and separate seats, but I found them to be bulky, hard to store, and difficult to clean. Having a little to big seat makes the process a lot simpler. The toddler seat stores inside the cover, keeping it out of the way for adult use, and features a no slamming soft close lid. And that means no pinched fingers. The install process is super easy and it will never loosen like some of the other inserts on the market. And this is especially important for those little ones who are afraid of the big toilet, thinking they might fall in. With little to big, they'll feel secure during potty training. It comes in both elongated and round shapes to perfectly match your toilet at home. Plus, it can just as easily be removed for cleaning or when it's no longer needed. To top it off, all Bemis toilet seats are made in the USA with eco-friendly processes. I highly recommend this product, especially if you have other people in your house who will be using the designated toilet in addition to your potty trainee. If you'd like to check it out yourself, I'll have it linked in my description below. My next tip is to create a sitting schedule. By this, I mean make a simple schedule outlining at what times you're gonna have your little one try to sit on the potty. 
My advice is to have them sit first thing in the morning, 15 to 30 minutes after breakfast, 15 to 30 minutes after lunch, 15 to 30 minutes after dinner, and right before bedtime. Also, I would write down every single time you notice a poop diaper, and after a few days of cataloging this, you'll hopefully be able to see a pattern and adjust your schedule if needed. Keep in mind that children are often poop trained well before they are pee trained, so focusing on bowel movements is a really good place to start. And the reason I choose 15 to 30 minutes after eating is because of the gastrocolic reflex. It's our body's natural response to food entering the stomach and a hormone is released that causes the colon to contract and move food through the digestive system and out, causing you to go to the bathroom about 15 to 30 minutes after you eat. Okay, my last trick is to utilize the people around you. Little siblings often look up to big siblings and just wanna do what they do. Copeland wants to go to school like Adalia. So I tell him, you need to learn how to go on the potty before you can go to school. For an older sibling learning to potty train, maybe it's part of the excitement that comes with that new role of becoming a big brother or sister and the pride that comes with being more independent and able to help others. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it gave you an idea for something that you can implement into your lives to help you with potty training. I just wanna do anything that I can to help all of the parents out there who are struggling because I totally understand the struggle. I was there with my daughter. I have a feeling I'm gonna be here again with my son. If you did find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment. I will answer as many comments as I can and as thoroughly as I can. I really enjoy speaking to each and every one of you who comments. So please leave me a comment below, give me a like, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and turn on the notification bell if you're interested in more potty training videos or any of the other type of lifestyle videos that I upload. And I will see you in the next one.